Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. As most of you know, I started this channel by sharing progress on a voxel ray tracing engine in OpenGL, and subsequently a small game with that engine, Teratoy. However, while developing Teratoy, I came to realize that my first voxel engine kind of sucked. It performed poorly and required optimization throughout Teratoy's development, it lacked features and wasn't built for production quality games, and the API was frustrating to work with. There are a lot of great voxel devs here on YouTube, with engines much more impressive than mine, and I'm not about to accept last place. It's time to take another shot at voxel ray tracing. This time, I'll be using the Vulkan graphics API, which I learned last video. Vulkan, unlike OpenGL, has support for hardware ray tracing, so it can utilize the special ray tracing hardware built into most modern GPUs. The past two months, I've mostly spent learning about the ray tracing pipeline, as very few resources exist on it. But I'm excited to finally see some progress. First, let's take a brief tour of the Vulkan ray tracing pipeline, since the whole engine will be built around it. The most important part of the pipeline is the acceleration structure. Vulkan's API supports GPU-side creation and traversal of an acceleration structure, which helps minimize the amount of intersection tests needed for a single ray by utilizing a spatial hierarchy. The API doesn't specify what data structure is actually used, but it's most likely just a BVH. This acceleration structure is made up of two levels. The bottom level acceleration structure stores individual objects, such as a single mesh, shape, or in my case, voxel volume. The API supports two types of bottom level acceleration structures, triangle meshes and axis aligned bounding boxes. Naturally, my engine uses simple bounding boxes for the bottom level acceleration structure. I have to fill in these AABBs with voxels myself using shaders. The top level acceleration structure is simply a container for multiple bottom level structures. I just need to specify a list of instances where each instance contains a reference to a bottom level acceleration structure, a transform matrix, and some other properties. Then, I pass along this array to Vulkan and it generates the acceleration structure for me. Now that there's an acceleration structure floating around in memory, I need to tell Vulkan what to do while traversing it with a number of shaders. The first is the ray gen shader, which spawns all of the rays for a single frame, generating their origins and directions. This is fairly simple and only takes a few lines of code. Then, the Vulkan drivers traverse the acceleration structure until an object is hit. Once an object's bounding box is hit, the optional intersection shader is invoked. The intersection shader allows users to define procedural intersection functions. Mesh-based ray tracers usually skip this shader, as the built-in mesh traversal is all you really need. In my case, however, I use this shader to turn those bounding boxes into actual voxel volumes by using a traversal algorithm, such as DDA. I simply find the point at which the ray entered the box, then begin stepping the ray through the volume. Once an intersection is reported, the optional any hit shader is invoked which I'll cover in another video since I'm not using it currently. The last two shaders are the closest hit and miss shaders. The closest hit shader is invoked if the ray hit at least one object and is only invoked for the closest object hit, contrary to the intersection and any hit shaders which are invoked for every object potentially hit. The miss shader is invoked for any ray that doesn't hit any object. Both of these shaders are in charge of writing to the ray payload. The payload is basically the set of data generated per ray. For now, it's just the ray's final color. These shaders can also cast rays themselves for recursive bounces. Now that you have an idea of how the core of the engine will work, I'll show you what progress I was able to make over the past two months.
I know it doesn't look like a lot of progress, but most of the infrastructure is now in place and I'll be able to start adding a lot of features much faster. I made it a priority to design an easy to use, easy to extend API. So I'm hoping to add a lot more to this engine than my last one. I'll talk more about the API design in a future video. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please let me know. I'd really like to make this engine something impressive.